Uh, hi, it's Peter Coffin. Have you ever seen Saturday Night Live? When I was growing up, Saturday Night Live was uh, great. Well, I mean, not really. That's kind of bullshit. Sorry. When I was growing up, Saturday Night Live had great things on it. It was not great. You know, I have more life experience at this point, and uh, I kind of think that Saturday Night Live is uh, the result of having a center of all media, New York City, and people who want to do comedy as a job. Like, these people spend their lives in New York, which, by the way, that's crazy enough as it is. Have you ever been to LaGuardia Airport? Like, imagine a building built to have, like, a city council meeting in or some shit, except for it's an international depot for travel. Fuck that place. I would never live there. And no offense to anybody who lives there and thinks it's the greatest city in the planet, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I disagree. But it is a job. They have to live in a certain place. They have to go to the office every day, and they do comedy job. And I realize that the stability that that sounds like it brings is probably something a lot of people want. I mean, doing something creatively as a job can lead to a lot of uncertainty and instability. And, and I get it. I get it. But while ostensibly this video is about SNL, what I really want to talk about is how annoying it is that all media is about media or specifically about creating media now. It's about the life of a media creator. And... I fucking hate that. I don't relate to it. Like, I am even somebody who creates media. I write books. I've sold thousands of copies of books. I make uh, documentaries. My YouTube channel, Very Important Documentaries, it has extremely high effort, um, oftentimes years in the making documentaries on it. But I, I just don't relate to this at all. There are two standouts for this type of media that I think honestly, I think contradict what I'm saying right now. The first one very recently, the Alan Wake series of video games, which is about a writer and the whole thing is about talking about writing and somehow it manages to be interesting and relatable. Uh, the other thing is Throw Mama from the Train, which is um, a Danny DeVito movie that's amazing. And if you haven't seen it, you should. But media is about media to the point of such saturation that Saturday Night Live has a sketch comedy troupe a la The Lonely Island. Uh, if you remember The Lonely Island, they made Dick in a Box, Lazy Sunday, um, I'm on a Boat. They, they made the movie Hot Rod, which is probably their crown achievement in my opinion. SNL is sort of continuing that tradition of hiring some internet comedy troupe to make digital shorts. Now, please don't destroy, I'm not familiar with outside of Saturday Night Live, and I'm not really a viewer of Saturday Night Live. Uh, I am a viewer of YouTube, and uh, it recommends Please Don't Destroy to me. And I've watched a couple of them, and the thing that I've noticed is that the vast majority of Please Don't Destroy videos appear to be them in the Saturday Night Live offices, Writing Saturday Night Live. The most recent one, Ramen Order, uh, was released this past weekend. I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm going to react to it. The only thing that I know about it is that it absolutely, at least in the first frame, completely matches what I'm talking about here. Because all of them do. Even the J.C. Penny hard seltzer one. I mean, it's about them sitting in the SNL offices writing SNL. And then they start drinking J.C. Penny hard seltzer. So anyway, let's check it out and, and we'll continue talking after that. Oh, I am. SNL writing night? What? Well, that's just like my life. I go to the job and I do the job. Oh, I am hungry as a horse. I'm starving. <gasps> Should we do ramen fever? It's so good. Have you had it? Oh my god, I've heard so much about that place. Dude, yeah. I'll get the order. Ramen, ramen, ramen time! I mean, they're just, they're just like you, all right? They're just like you, except for uh, their job is to sit in this room and 
Comment on society? Hey, baby. Sophia, I got a prescription, and the only ramen is more fever. Well, you know, I almost had it. Sophia. All right. Well, that's the thing I was talking about. Exactly. Sophia just broke up with me. What? We were supposed to move in together. Oh, my God, man. Oh. I don't even know what to say, man. I'm like freaking out. I am so sorry. My whole past two years has been entirely about her. Me and Martin are gonna be here for you, 100%. I feel like maybe she's just like upset and I don't know what I did. I just can't believe it. I know. What's your deal? Same. It's just like, I thought we were gonna spend the rest of our lives together. Now it's just like, what? I'm gonna be all alone? Like Ben. Now, I'm not here to say I hate this or anything. I don't. So I, I just want to take the second here to acknowledge, like, I'm not taking a shit on these guys or anything. I'm just trying to show how hyper-focused on media, like, media is. It, it, it's, it's so meta. These are SNL writers talking about life in the SNL offices, making funny stuff for SNL. Where does SNL end and real life begin? What do I do, man? You're asking me? Was she embarrassed of me? Like, she never introduced me to her friends, and it's like, am I a loser? Mm, yeah. Dude, come on, man. No, John, about? listen, you're gonna find someone new. Someone who deserves you. Yeah, John, maybe even someone who's spicy. Spicy, eh? Maybe medium spicy. Oh. With buns. With extra buns. So like a plain looking girl with a big ass? Well, I guess. And maybe she'll even have baby bok choy. What are you guys talking about? It makes you feel better, John. See, now that's a good joke. Can you imagine if they weren't in the SNL offices and were instead like in an apartment, you know, just doing people stuff rather than writing for SNL? But no, there's this imposition of SNL. And again, I'm not here to tell people what is and isn't funny. There's a lot of shit on SNL that I don't think is funny. Um, that doesn't mean these guys aren't funny. The thing I'm critiquing is the framing, less so the comedy. Like, this is a thing that is ostensibly about a relatable human situation, but it's inherently because of its framing. Also about Saturday Night Live. I got a prescription, uh -oh. and the only ramen is more fever. How do we fit a Saturday Night Live reference in? Saturday Night Live is on the TV in the background, right there. This is a Saturday Night Live office where they're pressing buttons on their Saturday Night Live owned computers, making Saturday Night Live. Hey, John. Yeah. Give me a hug, bud. Sometimes you just need that, a hug from somebody you trust. Of course, man. I love you. This is the hardest day of my entire life, and I'm- Text from Martin. I'm too hungry to listen to this bitch complaint. Yon emoji. Is that about me? So let's quickly look at a few comments here. I love how much comedy these guys are able to create without leaving the office. I love how much happens in that small office room. It's like the Destroy Boys' own little universe. I got a prescription, and the only ramen is more fever. So just again to say this, I am not shitting on these guys. I don't want to you know, take away from anything they're able to do. They're able to write some funny things here, but... The purpose of them is not for them to express themselves. Their purpose is for SNL to have a low-cost way of putting the SNL name all over the internet. Uh, this video has 616,790 views, which is a lot. Way more than I'm going to get with this one. The description is not particularly descriptive. Three guys attempt to order food. Like, it doesn't even go into the situation. The point is to use the reach that SNL has to create something that might be considered hip 
wow, hip. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm talking about how hip stuff is. No, but that's really what viral content is, right? I, I was recommended a video by that one janitor about David S. Pumpkins, about why he was popular. And he said it was ultimately about liberal hubris. Like they thought Trump was going to lose to such a point that they could make unity content, <laughs> like stuff that was for everybody. And even went as far as to show uh, Tom Hanks, the Black Jeopardy skit with Tom Hanks, which is, by the way, a great skit. Like that's a really good skit. And David S. Pumpkins is funny, too. It just resonated with people. You know, people people really wanted something not political at that. Like it was a couple weeks before the election, man. It was just the right thing at the right time. But these things aren't popular because of what category of content they are. They're popular because the platform that distributes them has full vertical integration. People forget that SNL isn't like, please don't destroy three guys uploading shit to the internet. SNL is a TV program on a channel with vertical integration built into it. What's vertical integration? Vertical integration is the combination in one company of two or more stages of production normally operated by separate companies. What this means is that SNL doesn't have to rely on an outside machine to promote itself. Something like David S. Pumpkins has the benefit of not just being uploaded to YouTube and getting injected into an algorithm. There is also a TV network that has the Today Show, the Tonight Show, endless other things who will talk about the content that was created on their own network, promoting it and making it into a topic of discussion around water coolers across the country. If anything, YouTube kind of works as a little test bed to figure out what stuff resonates. You go through the, the comments and see, oh, this one seems to be getting more comments than this one. Those comments seem to be a little more positive. They seem to be a little more participatory. They seem to have a little bit more edge to them, whatever. And then come Monday, Al Roker gets his formerly fat ass up, walks down to 30 Rock to talk about the upcoming election, how crazy it is, but it's not nearly as crazy as this weird skit with Tom Hanks in a fucking pumpkin suit. What the fuck is that shit? You got, you got to see this. We got to get Tom Hanks on here to talk about it sometime. And then Tom Hanks is on some show at some point. Tom Hanks promotes a movie on The Tonight Show. Well, there is a piece of content that NBC owns that they benefit from bringing back up repeatedly. So Tom Hanks goes on Tonight Show and Jimmy Fallon is like, ha 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 ha, remember David S. Pumpkins? Ha 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 ha. Jimmy Fallon laughs a lot. It's not even a stab at him. It's just true. But it's vertical integration. Like everybody keeps talking about how meta all of the media has become. And it's not just that it's meta it's not that it acknowledges itself it's all vertically integrated these companies want people to understand the culture uh that is behind the making of all of this stuff on top of this stuff that's why uh the whole behind the scenes aesthetic with snl references and posters and all that that's why that's in that video i would argue the reason for that is because they think that every story has been told. So we have to get people invested in the personalities behind the stories. Otherwise, what's the point? We've already heard this same thing before. And the fact of the matter is, that's not the problem. I'm not more invested in any kind of content because of how much insider baseball there is. I'm not. And I also feel like they should understand it's not working. Like these huge MCU films are failing despite all of their efforts to like put these people on talk shows and make them relatable. And Brie Larson has a YouTube channel and talks about like normal ass shit on it. Today I'm trying this new Athletic Greens. Also go see the Marvels. It's, it's all vertically integrated. All of the content is self-referential. All of it is all one big business, even with people who are simply aping the sensibilities of it for their own purposes, don't realize they're contributing to this same vertical integration. And this is why no media is interesting anymore. I'm just supposed to consume it. 
And that's supposed to be interesting enough that I'll support these overall structures that continue to produce this life that I'm supposed to not even really participate in, but rather support. And that shit's fucking weird.